Hey guys, it's David East, and in this video, we'll take a look at why math and CSS is so difficult and how less fixes this. Math and CSS can be tricky. Before the calc function in CSS3 came along, we couldn't do any calculations. Even simple calculations such as adding pixels wasn't supported. We're getting a width of 100% because this calculation is invalid. When the calc function came along in CSS3, math finally became a possibility. Even though the calc function was an improvement, it's far from ideal. Without any variables, this function is almost powerless. And this is one of the many reasons why CSS preprocessors are so powerful. Let's say we want to create a main box with a width of 600 pixels. First, we'll create a container. Then we'll create a box that inherits this width. And within Copen, we'll switch over to less. Below this main box, we want four evenly spaced boxes. Since our main width is 600 pixels, we know that each sub box will be 150 pixels in width. We'll do a quick bit of math to do this calculation. The boxes are now in one line, but there's no spacing between them. We'll add a bit of margin to the right. The spacing is in place, but the boxes are now in two lines. The margin we added pushes the boxes apart, and it increases the width on this row. To fix this, we need to take into account the newly added margin when we're calculating out the sub boxes width. First of all, this class is applying margin to each one of these boxes. And if we have a right margin on the last box, it'll never line up perfectly. So let's remove the margin from the last box. Using the last child, we'll grab the last box, and we'll set its margin right to zero. This still doesn't fix our problem though. The issue is these three spaces right here. Right now we're calculating from the width of 600 pixels. What we need to calculate from is the width of the boxes without the margin. To do that, we get the sum of the margin, and then we subtract that from 600 pixels. That number will help tell us what the width of each subbox should be. We remove one of the boxes from our calculation because it doesn't have any margin, hence subbox is minus one. Then we multiply that by the margin, which gives us the total margin within these three spaces. Now we need to calculate the width of the sub box. We'll subtract the sum of the margin from the main box, then we'll divide it by the number of sub boxes. The sub boxes now align with the main box. Calculations aren't just limited to pixels either. Colors are hex, which means we can calculate them as well. Let's subtract the main gray from the sub red. Now the sub boxes are this teal shade of blue. We've learned that math and CSS is far from ideal. Using a preprocessor like less gives us the power that we'd expect from CSS as a language. So like always, if you have any questions or want something explained in more detail, leave a comment or hit me up on Twitter.